Ladies and gentlemen, to our interview. Today we have been fortunate enough to secure an interview with none other than the president, William Jefferson Blythe III. You may just know him as Bill Clinton. Some interesting facts for our viewers are that Bill Clinton is one of the youngest presidents in American history and the first president from the baby boomer generation. He's very intelligent and finished in the top 10% of his graduating class. He also received a Rhodes Scholarship to attend the University of Oxford. He used to be the governor of Arkansas. Now that we know a little bit more about Mr. Clinton, let's move on to the interview. Thank you, and good morning. Now, uh, what would you like to know about me? Good morning, Mr. Clinton. How do you feel about what's going on in Haiti? Oh, I should give some background knowledge to the viewers. Mr. Clinton, can you explain the current situation in Haiti? Yes, of course. In September 29th, 1991, there was a military coup in Haiti. The president, John Bertrand Aristide, was elected eight months prior but was deposed by the Haitian army. Then this coup was led by a man named Raul Cedros, and Cedros was the army general. Why exactly was the president overthrown? We have reports that Aristide was smuggling lots of drugs, at the same time he was trying to pass new laws to limit the trade of narcotics. This really irritated those who relied on the drug trade for money, and corruption in the government were major causes to unrest against their new elected president. So what was the situation in Haiti after that? Well, sadly, the group that took power was a uh, radical group and a military group that was very violent. Many refugees, including Aristide, tried to escape to the United States. Luckily, Ar Aristide was helped by U.S. diplomats to safety, but many Haitian refugees were uh, risking their lives in both trying to make their way into the United States in order to try for a new life. So, did we let them in? Wouldn't it help them to come to America? Well, the thing is, we can't let so many Haitian refugees come into our nation. We don't have the capacity to hold them, and it won't help solve the problem in Haiti. Ah, I see. Thank you for giving us that background knowledge, Mr. Clinton. What did you do next? Well, we first insisted that American troops that we sent in do not act as Haiti's police, even though the uh, new president wanted us, to, uh, the exiled president, sorry, wanted us to beat down the rising military power. Our goal was to simply disarm the military regime in Haiti and to restore its democracy but not to take control in Haiti because that would violate our principles as Americans. American soldiers are at risk in Haiti so we are trying to, we tried to do this as quickly as possible. For us, the US operation along with the other UN troops was successful in Haiti and we were able to get rid of Cedra and remove the military regime and eventually the country was saved. And this finally achieved my goal and the nation's goal of putting Aristide back to his rightful presidency, and but one the other thing that happened was we were a little scared that Saddam Hussein would start withdrawing his troops from the Kuwait border after I had announced the American demilitarization. We were worried that he might put troops in Haiti, and so I sent 350 military aircraft for protection because we cared about the Haiti people. Oh, sorry, let me take this. Uh, Monica, uh, uh, not right now. Oh, uh, looks like time's sorry, running out. Who is that? Uh, sorry, I need, I need to go. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, hello. I didn't see you there. It's a President Bill Clinton. And I was just reading my new book about my life, Bill Clinton. It's a book about me, by me, and for Bill Clinton fans everywhere. So if you want to learn more about Bill Clinton and my amazing life, then I hope to see you at your local bookstore picking up my life, Bill Clinton, by yours truly, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton signing off. Hey guys, I'm out here with a Haitian refugee who tried to escape from the U.S. following the coup in 1991. The harbor was filled with many people. Many as 40,000 people tried to escape, and most were denied. Now tell me, what is your name, and what are you doing? My name is Fabian Paul Quinn, and I tried to escape to the U.S. because my life was terrible under the new military regime. I love to vote, and that Aristide was an amazing leader, especially because of the U.S. Now this bloody coup has taken place, and people are dying everywhere. Fabian could have been one of the few people who may have been able to make it out to this place. The majority of them have been turned away because of America's refusal to make it out to this place. Fabian, what is your perspective on the American government? Well, at first I thought that the U.S. would help us out because they stood by democracy and that guarantee. But now they wouldn't do anything to help us when an actual tyrant comes and takes power and starts slaughtering mothers, fathers, and now that Clinton has passed Operation Uphold Democracy, do you think you might have new faith in the American government? 
Well, that is great and all, but they just left us to ourselves again and only come back to help us when their own stakes were at risk. America and its leaders don't care about us. We're going to continue this cycle of changing leaders. Thank you. My next question is, what do you think of the joint operation that the UN and US acted upon to stabilize Haiti? Well, they wanted to send troops to save us, but they wouldn't take us in and shelter us. What Bill Clinton did was really wrong. You said something about it being the fault of Bill Clinton. Why do you believe so? Well, it seems as if the president didn't think anything. He places the first elected president. For the first time in history, we are voting. And he leaves us and pretends everything will be fine, that the progressive movements will cause radical movements. Why wasn't he here to stabilize us and make sure everything went well? Okay, well, let's talk about life here. What is going on that the mainstream media doesn't cover? There's violence on the street every single day. Not all of it is from the new regime, though. The st stagnant economy has caused a giant rise in poverty that has caused a downfall in morale. My last question is, what would you like to say for all those people in the U.S. and in Haiti? The only thing I want to say is that do what's right for Haiti. We are a poor country hoping to rise as a first world country. But instances like these will not help us. We can't constantly try and take a step forward progressively and take two steps back because of the U.S.-Haiti issues. Well, you've heard it here first. Back to you.